Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, now, it's the things I need. Mm -hmm. I, I'll have one more for this. Call the meeting to order. Thank everyone for coming to this evening's meeting. Let the record reflect that we are absent Gigi and Byron from tonight's meeting. Gigi is under the weather, and Byron had a sudden trip out of state that he had to take. We also have our student rep is present this evening. And we'll go ahead and move to the flag salute. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I wouldn't put that on the buy list or something. <laughs> I'll never disagree with that request. That's a good thing. Review of the agenda. I know we have an updated agenda yeah, there's, a, there's two items that have been updated. One of them is the servicing costs from various vendors, and the other one is, is um, just a rate sheet, uh, nothing final, but uh, a discussion point from Cashmere Valley Bank. That, I think it's 4%. Is that correct, Dan? No, 385. 385. Oh, 3 so it's actually lower than I thought it was going to be. That's good. At least a place to start talking. Public input. I have no one signed up to speak, although I have people signed up. I think they're here for one of the agenda items. I want to remind everybody um, our internet watchers and listeners to this meeting are having difficulty hearing, so speak loudly and clearly. Use your teacher voice or your I'm mad at my mom voice if you're speaking tonight. Um, and our first item up for the study session is recognition of the HOSA team of Brandy. Hello, everybody. I did bring um, a visual to share with you a little bit of a program update. So not just with our host of competition, but with the health science programs in general. Um, we have had a tremendous year um, and very much thanks to the board being so supportive of students seeking out and having new experiences and opportunities. So I brought pictures. I want you to see what they've done and I want you to hear from some of my student leaders about their experiences because I think that's important to students. Okay, so if you don't know already, um, health science or the department at the school is has really become quite deep over the last nine years. We began with one class of sports medicine and now we have uh, three separate classes available at four levels of study. It begins with a, a class targeted at freshmen and sophomores, uh, health science and body systems, um, after which they can take uh, sports medicine, the beginning sports medicine, and 11th and 12th graders can take advanced sports medicine both at like third year and fourth year at this point. So it's a really deep um, uh, plan of education, program of education, and it counts as a graduation pathway through career and technical education. And there's some pictures of students doing all kinds of stuff. Um, first of all, we want to thank you so much for sending us to Wazoo. Um, we came to you in December and asked permission to go in January, driving, trekking over the pass for like a whirlwind overnight activity over there. So there's a picture of us in the snow stopping for a pit stop because who does this in January? That would be us. Um, and a picture of my group of students, uh, four of which are here tonight. Um, and these are my advanced sports medicine students. They had the opportunity to do a, a lab experience with human cadavers in the Wazoo Cadaver Lab. And in the picture on the right up there, the gal in the tan vest, she was the TA for the experience who taught my students in that lab. And she is one of my former students now in the master's program in uh, athletic training at Wazoo. So it was really kind of a full circle teacher moment for me to watch my former students teach my new students. Um, here are some pictures of students on campus and in some special advising sessions outside of the cadaver lab. The picture on the top right are students in a private um, athletic training um, information session, advising session about the program, how the program works. It's a new master's program, talking about the clinical requirements and all that kind of thing. And on the bottom, this was a larger session with graduate students in the kinesiology lab. 
so uh, the study of body exercise and movement goes kind of runs parallel to athletic training, though they're two different programs. And so students got um, a chance to be immersed in the details of both of those programs and what they look like in a local state college. Um, if you want to move to the next slide for me. In the cadaver lab, uh, Wazoo has a strict no photo policy. So I could not take pictures of these gals with their hands in bodies. How, however, other, yeah, other colleges, they put them online. So what I did was I just tried to find some pictures that literally look very similar. Girls, would you say? That looks real similar to what we experienced in the lab. Um, so I just want to um, take a brief moment and, and have um, some of my girls here talk about that experience. Jess, you want to stand for a minute? This is Jess Raisler. So what would you say was the coolest part for you as a senior going to have this experience? I think it was definitely just like having the hands-on experience because like the past three years we've seen everything virtual and on our iPads so it was really cool to actually go in person and see everything like like an actual person who lived and basically just be able to touch everything and just see how the body actually can work. Yeah. Did you find it easy to recognize the parts of the body that we saw? Yeah, I think it was um, very helpful to first do the online component and then switch to go seeing it in person because then you can really apply that anatomy piece to see it like in real life. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Um, Grace, stand up for a second. Did you grab a hold of the Achilles tendon when we were in the lab? Yes. Ooh, what did you tell the board about that? Um, it was very thick and you could like actually feel how strong it is. Like when you say it's a hard tendon to rupture, it's it's strong. You could feel it in the body. Yeah. Um, Peyton, what was the coolest thing about this for you? Um, for me, the coolest part was really like the proportions of everything and the colors. Since we've seen it all online, it's highlighted and separate. And seeing how much everything is the same color makes you realize like how much the people who work in these jobs have to know the anatomy. What do you want to do? I want to be a doctor. I want to be a cardio surgeon if I can. Yeah, you can. <laughs> Camden, you had a chance to hold a human heart in your hand just like that. Actually, all the girls did. What was that like? Um, it was really weird. It <laughs> 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 like, doesn't look real when you're just looking at it on a screen. When you're actually holding it, it's just like, it really puts it in perspective. Um, so that was crazy. And also seeing like all the little intricate structures, it, it was just crazy. Like we could hold the sciatic nerve. Yeah. And like <laughs> pick at it. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. What was the hardest part about that experience? Anybody? The hardest part? The smell. <laughs> <laughs> kind of medicine-y. Kind of medicine. -y. It took them about two minutes the of smell, instruction. Formaldehyde? Yeah. No. It took them about two minutes to stand there with their gloves on. And then when I said, it's okay, you could like put your hands, in. it's all right. As soon as they got their hands in there, they were elbows deep in mm -hmm. these bodies. They were, yeah, I was just, you know, my cheeks were hurting. I'm really I was glad smiling. that you girls can do that because there is no way we're <laughs> it, have a chance. It was fantastic. It was a fantastic experience. So just, you know, thank you so much for that. They, they loved every second of that literal, 600 miles, lab, session, session, 600 miles. But, you know, it was nuts. But they had a really good time. So I appreciate that. Um, we have a very active, you hear the, the acronym HOSA a lot. And I just want to kind of explain that because people still say to me, well, what's HOSA? And how is it part of what you do? Um, in Career and Technical Education, OSPI, tells us as teachers and educators that we must align our classes and its curriculum and coursework with student-led leadership organizations. So HOSA is to my health science kids like FFA is to um, agricultural kids. It is uh, leadership based. It is focused on learning and excelling in that program area. So with HOSA, um, HOSA used to be called uh, Health Occupation Students of America. 
and then we joined it after they decided to keep HOSA, and then they just say HOSA Future Health Professionals. I, I can't tell you why it's that way, it just is. Um, but um, students really have the opportunity when they're aligned with this group to practice professional skills, leadership skills, um, learn about professions in the career or in the different medical careers. And this is the group that hosts our state competition. So it's pretty big. And the thing about HOSA is it's embedded in all our classes. So every health science student is a HOSA student. Whether they choose to um, apply for a position on our state team or they just want to get involved in community outreach, however they want to be involved, they can be involved. Um, Peyton is actually our HOSA president. Grace is our vice president. Um, Camden is one of our social media managers. So we do have a lot of leadership stuff going on at our local level, okay? So here I'm just showing you all the things that go on in HOSA classrooms. We're at the sideline. There's Peyton and I in the training room. Um, there's a group at a wrestling meet waiting for people to bleed. There's students in class. Um, no, really, we stand around and wait for people to get hurt. Um, uh, students in class teaching each other about different medical injuries that they've researched. And then just today, I snapped this of my advanced class as they were planning their, um, their blood drive and student blood typing day activities. And again, I was mentioning to a few of you before the meeting started, with my advanced students, they are such incredible leaders. And um, I can give them some instruction and stand back and just watch them do. And that's what happened in the classroom today. So it was pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing stuff. Okay. Um, our HOSA leadership, um, Peyton Schlicker is our president. There she is again. Uh, Grace is our vice president. Jenna Fleming is our secretary. Paige Van Hooley, do I ever say her name right? Say it again. Van Hawley. Van Hawley. Uh, you'd think I would do it by now. Um, is our treasurer. Go ahead and. And then we have two ASB representatives to make sure that we always have someone at an ASB meeting and we can get information there. Um, that's Kiana Kipros, Tristan Lopez, then Camden, Fajardo, and Cameron Skeeth are our social media managers and run our Facebook and Instagram um, pages for our specific HOSA group and just a remarkable group of young leaders. Um, we are very excited to uh, remind um, our school board that we do have uh, the Washington HOSA president. Uh, there she is right there, Maria Vasquez. She, she joined us in the back. Maria, would you come up with me? Um, Maria began uh, as one of my COVID students I met on screen, as well as some of my other students did. Um, she has now excelled um, and has been voted in as the Washington State HOSA president, and we are very proud of that. Very so, um, Maria. Just yes. briefly, would you share with the board um, host, what HOSA looks like from the, from the state level, what you've enjoyed this year, and what you have planned for next year? Whoa, uh, explaining what HOSA looks like to all of you just here is absolutely like crazy because <laughs> taking it from like a leadership perspective where you're in front of 2,000 something people and talking and then just being able to like stand in front of all of you and tell you that it's been a life-changing experience that has really led me to grow as a person, not only as a person, but as a leader. And also seeing how all of my classmates get involved in HOSA and seeing how they like plant their little seed everywhere they go. And like they spark this amazing energy that like literally creates a chain reaction. Like what you see there is all effort, commitment, hard work, dedication. And if I could tell you anything from the state officer perspective is that it's hard work, but everything that happens in HOSA, it's all worth it, regardless of what it is. Like all late nights, I was just in Puyallup giving a, a state conference, uh, well not state conference, but like it was like an explanation of what HOSA was to all of these students that were really interested in it. And I'm just back from there and it was really cool to see all their interest kind of like spark and like build up. So if I could tell you anything from a state officer perspective and what my experience has been like, literally unforget like unforgettable. I will carry that for like the rest of my life. Um, throughout my career, I want to be a radiologist assistant, um, and I'm really interested in that. And I would recommend or advise anyone that's young and really cares about the healthcare area that it's a great opportunity for you to get involved. Like, 
Uh, I was recently in Washington, D.C. Because of HOSA, I've gotten other connections that have led me to be able to travel other places and meet new people, gain more experience, talk to other people. Like, I met Patty Murray, Maria Campbell. I advise them and also talk to them, spoke to them about supporting CTSO programs, which is HOSA. Uh, CAFC is also an organization that I represent, and I fly across the country all the time missing school because of all that. <laughs> <laughs> one, of, one of the coolest things for me to watch was Maria B. Um, inducted as the president um, at our state competition. So her last day as HOSA president will be the last day of state next year, but also as our state team was winning awards, watching her face light up every time Sultan High School came across that screen, she was like, I did a little dance, guys. I saw the quote, but I'm just like, yeah, that's Sultan. But Thank you. It was really great. So, so leadership, you. leadership is, is really a part of what we do, and it goes from our chapter all the way to the state at this point. So something I'm really proud of, and I'm, I'm really proud of my, my students for that. Uh, I want to talk to you about our state competition. Uh, this year, we had the largest qualifying state team at Sultan High School since we started. Uh, we took 14 students to state, and there they all are, looking as professional as ever. I'm super proud of these girls. They, it had been two years since we had done an in-person state competition, and I'm telling you what, it, it kicked me in the hiney. Like, it was exhausting. They handle it like champs. Um, for the fourth year in a row, um, our Sultan High School students placed in the top three for sports medicine. Camden, would you stand up? She took second place in sports med for Sultan High School, and we're talking probably 55 schools or more competing in this comp competition, and there she is running at me with her medal. So that was like one of my favorites. Um, we had three, of the, only, the only school in all the competitions that had three students in the finals, in the final round. So Camden, Jenna took seventh place, which is not meddling, but it's still a huge accomplishment. And Peyton, they were all three in the final rounds of competition. So amazing, amazing. Um, we did have uh, two students for the first time compete in independent medical research. Um, Addie King, who's not here with us tonight, is a sophomore. And she did independent medical research on the effects of pandemic isolation and the prevalence of anxiety and depression in her peers using a PHQ-9 and a GAD-7, which are medical um, questionnaires that help doctors decide if people are suffering from these symptoms. Her research was mind-blowing, and the candor with which her peers answered her anonymously was amazing. That sophomore took fourth in state for her individual research, and I couldn't be more proud because she was scared to death. And she did an amazing job. So um, just kind of from a, uh, an advisor perspective, we're not allowed to go in and stand with them when they do their thing usually. But the judges accidentally left the door open. So I kind of got to stand way far away. And I took my phone and I zoomed way in. And she's presenting to these uh, medical scientists about her research like a pro. She just looked like a pro. And I'm getting all teary. I couldn't hear her, but I could see it. So fourth in state for Addie. She did amazing. Um, Jenna Fleming took fifth in state in medical writing. So they give um, students a medical problem. They have, what, one hour to solve the problem and write an essay on it, on how they would address the problem. So she did amazing. Um, I do want to give special recognition to my super young uh, students. I had a team of three. Uh, two freshmen led by one sophomore in a medical problem solving competition where they're handed a medical problem, they're given 20 minutes to solve it and then present on it. Um, the topic, the secret topic was mental health and um, emotional needs of their peers. And their individual plan, they came up with a beautiful plan um, that was basically a peer-to-peer -peer counseling group um, with a fantastic, they were so excited when they came out, and out of 43 teams, they took seven. I, again, they didn't medal, but they did amazing, and they are young, so kudos to them. Um, but for the third year in a row, our Sultan High School team are the state anatomy champions, and I could uh, not be happier. Um, we do not compete 
um, based on uh, school size. We compete against all schools, all sizes. And in the final four anatomy, we had Puyallup High School, Newport Bellevue, Sultan High School, and Mount Spokane. And three of those girls are here tonight. Would you please stand? Here are your anatomy champions. They are, oh man, they just nailed it. They just nailed it. Um, such a beautiful display of professionalism and knowledge and teamwork and leadership. Um, I, I couldn't be more pleased. And McKenna was a freshman um, part of this team, and she is not here tonight, but um, she was pretty excited. She was pretty excited. So if you roll forward, here are some still pictures of them doing what they do in the upper right. Um, that's our winning team doing their preliminary rounds. Um, the bottom one, they placed first in the pre preliminary rounds. But you can see how that anatomage table stands up. That's a really neat feature of, of the table that we are trying to buy. You can stand it straight up in the classroom like that. Um, and then here is a video. It's OK. This is a video, um, a bootleg video, <laughs> of their competition, their first round of competition. There's not audio because everything needs to be really silent. Um, audio you might hear is me kind of whispering under my breath and my husband telling me to be quiet. <laughs> um, but what I want you to see first is how the competition works. So you're seeing one side of the room. On the other side of the room is the other team doing the exact same thing at the exact same time. Um, and they are working on an anatomage table, um, looking at actual cross sections of bodies and being asked to find different an anatomical structures as fast as they can in a team. So here they are working, flipping the body. Right there, they're looking for thyroid cartilage. I think that's where Mike told me to be quiet. Um, here they're looking for the aortic arch. So it goes um, body system to body system. It'll go like muscles, bones, bony landmarks, um, circulatory system, nervous system, urinary system, like back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And on the screen, you can see how they're able to turn the body and find those different pieces of the body. Now, this video, it goes on for four minutes. You don't have to watch the whole thing. But I did want you to see what one round of their competition looked like. And they were up there alone in front of the auditorium doing their thing. So pretty is that proud a race? Is that a race with the other team? Or yes, it it's head to head, okay. head to head. So every answer is ten points. You lose one point if you get it wrong, but you can skip as many as you like because they come back to you. So if you're not sure, skip it. Answer the ones you know to gain your points. It's all strategy and anatomy knowledge, and this is just one of the many functions of an anatomage table. But learning anatomy on a real cadaver um, is is pretty amazing. So I think that might be towards the, that's the very end. So if you could roll back a couple slides. I just want to talk to you about what we are doing. Um, okay, oops. Okay. All right. So kind of breaking news. <laughs> um, on Thursday, the thir or on, on the 31st, that was Friday, I received an email uh, invitation to the National Anatomy Competition the day we left for spring break. That's when I got the email. All I know is that we've been invited. I know it's in Northern California, um, and it is in person this year. Last year, they competed virtually in the national competition, and we took fifth. Um, if you ask my girls, it's why? It's lagging. Say it louder. It's when the computer's too slow. Our computer was lagging. Oh, no. And other people were competing on? I got them on tables. On the table, and we were competing on a computer screen with a mouse. But they took fifth in the nation last year. So. You know, kind of a joke in the superintendent circle is I was, I asked a group of superintendents and the superintendent meeting, do you guys know what an anatomage table is? One person in the room knew. And so I started to describe what they were doing and they said, so what do you guys do out in Sultan? Do you use a game operation to train for this? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's, a, that's about, you know. That's about what we do, huh? But that's they're... Terrible. They're still <laughs> kicking behind and, and they, taking oh, they things. laughed oh, and they laughed and laughed and had a great time with it. Yeah. So, well, we're state champs. So it yeah, we are. <laughs> we are. They all are playing Operation now. <laughs> right. 
So I just wanted to share that little bit with you. Um, I don't quite know how it's going to work. I sent an email immediately and said, hey, give me more information. Um, so I'll follow. I'll follow as soon as I know. I should probably know by tomorrow. Um, they're usually really good at getting back quickly. That's what I know. Okay, so they, uh, my students have been fundraising to buy an anatomage table for the classroom, and they have been working their patoots off, um, including we applied for and did receive a $12,000 grant. Um, not as much as we need, but we'll take free money. Um, they have made about $3,600 from other fundraising efforts, and we've uh, collected right now almost $1,400 in community donations. We are just above $17,000, but that's not bad to start, right? I don't, we've never made this much money before to try to buy anything. So they are actively working. Um, two of their big finish items um, are coming up. So I wanted, wanted to share those with you real quick. Um, so <clears throat> they've been um, working on, they have a sticker store all year long. Um, they have our student designed water bottle stickers that are all different kinds of funny things, commemorative things, nice things. Um, we have, um, right now we have a teacher commemorative series coming out on their favorite teachers. So like Fullerland, it's like Disneyland with homework. Um, <laughs> Mr. Harris, who wears a vest every single oh, day of his life. It's a oh, vest, yes. it's a vest that just says, hi, I'm Jackie Harris. Um, Mr. Rudd, it's just his bald head and it said, you've reached your maximum award quota for the day. So you just like, things that are endearing to students, and they've created this design. Um, they even have one with Mr. McMahon that he loved. He was fascinated with the iPads we use, and they took a picture of him, they call him the iPad kid. And he loves it, he thought it was hilarious. Um, there's one that says, I survived the wildfires, you know, from earlier in the year. Yeah, and so they've been working and selling these things. We've also sent out some information. You can see two flyers you might see in windows of businesses right now with a QR code to scan to donate if the community would like to donate to our cause. Uh, but our big push right now are um, education and typing days. Um, our type, blood typing education and blood drive days. Um, Camden, would you stand please? This idea won fourth in state last year in medical problem solving. And Camden was one of those students that came up with this idea. Can you explain just really briefly what these two parts do? Yeah, so um, our first part is having a designated blood typing day or event where students and staff can come in and get their blood type with an Elden card. And so it's like official representation and it tells you your blood type. And our idea with this is that we can use this as an, as an opportunity to educate students and staff on how important their blood type is. For example, if they're a universal donor and they can give out to anyone, which is super important, given the current blood shortage that we're in. So our idea with this is that knowing your blood type and knowing how important it is, is that it'll motivate them to donate because they'll feel the altruistic <laughs> need to help. Yeah. yeah, and then followed by a what? Typing and then what? And then a blood drive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who do we partner with? We're partnering with Bloodworks Northwest to do this. And then for a community blood drive, we're partnering with the fire department and hosting it there. So if you move to the next slide, we're doing students and staff in April and then the greater community in May. So they will hold a blood typing day for the community. <clears throat> as well as we partnered with um, the fire department and we're holding the community blood drive in May in the new building in their community room. And so there'll be a banner out front and lots of visibility, but the thing we ran into was we couldn't do them together because we can't have random people coming in to the building to donate blood while we're in the middle of a school day. So we separated those two days to, to manage the security thing. Um, also, when they come in, a community comes in, there's a large banner you can see on the side that'll say, if you would like to donate to our cause, please scan here and you may do so. So we're using it as a community outreach and education, um, also to try to help solve the blood shortage or help do our part, and then also as a fundraiser. So I think that is it. Yep, that's it. Um, 
if you have any questions, we would be happy to answer them. That was very informative, and I think I'm not speaking for the board, but on the board's behalf, I guess, and we're, we're all very proud of the work you put in. It's amazing what our little school does, and that you can compete at this level. It's impressive because when I was in high school, I wasn't competing at any state levels in anything academically to see that we're doing that. It's not just the board promoting it, it's your education system, the teacher that's providing this, you know, it provides the drive and motivation, and you guys are achieving a much higher level than any other school in our state or size. Our size. So just to put some of the size into perspective, you know, the WIAA looks at it from 9th through 11th, and you know, I looked this up, I didn't know about Newport, but they're probably in the middle of Mount Spokane, and um, Puyallup's the fourth largest high school in the state. Their 9 through 12 enrollment is 1,860. Our 9 through 12 enrollment is 411. You know, at four times the size. And so, uh, Mount Spokane's 9 through 12 enrollment is 1,250 or something mm -hmm. like that. So you're dealing with just these much bigger schools that probably have an animal's paper. They've got, more, of course, more affluent communities with much, many more resources. But my students are are working their high knees off and I know more about nationals. I really feel like my kids could take this. I really feel like given a level playing field and their knowledge base, I really feel like they might come home your national champions. I think you might be um, right. yeah, it's just phenomenal to watch these girls work, study, work as a team, lead and then win. Well I think they're leaving high school having the classes that you would typically have your freshman sophomore year in college preparing mm -hmm. yourself. So there's a real advantage there. Yeah. You're going to ace those first two years really easy. Mm -hmm. And then by the time you take it seriously, you'll have to start working more diligently. Uh, well, any questions from the board? Yeah. Any questions? When Casey, why are you in my class? I, as you were talking, I was like, man, I really should have done it. 90% <laughs> because of the Wazoo trip. But like, awesome. Yeah. When will you know more about the Nationals? Nationals. Hopefully tomorrow. I sent an email like right when right when we left for break, and I said, I need more information than this. Can someone get back to me? I sent another one right after school today. If I don't have an email when I come to work tomorrow, I will pick up the phone and call. So, so I should know. Dan, Dan, in regard to that, do we have a meeting that would be timely enough so that we can approve it? Yeah. 24th but, of uh, April's our next But call. is that early enough for you to and qualify to answer a yes? Yeah, because we'll it's, on, on, it's actually on I'm Sunday the 7th. I'm it's on Mother's Day. Give a tentative. We already supported tonight. I think we can um, verbally support it. And if we have oh, to have an emergency right? Zoom meeting that takes yeah. five minutes, yeah. so is yeah, there all we can say is there anything we can do tonight to okay. ensure that everything is in a timely manner so everybody has proper notification? Yeah, not really. I need more information so I can yeah. give it to you and my yeah. supervisor and all that and say, here, this is what I'd like to do. So if I get that information, I will like stay after work tomorrow and put it together. But like it happened the day we left for break, yeah. and I've got nothing since then. So I think we can voice our yes. We want you Thank to be you. able to do this. We just need we by by policy we have to have yep. more information. Oh yeah, and I wasn't even approaching it for any kind of approval or anything. I just wanted to let you know that's exciting that they got this invitation and scholarships if you do well. Huge scholarships, yeah. huge scholarships opportunities for them. You, and I was your like, parents know that, right? Yes, I said to the girls the I, I, right the before we left, this, hey, and I read them the email, and I'm like. The reason I bring this up is one of the parents called me on Saturday. Oh, <laughs> and said. That I had to pay attention. Oh, you had to pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that, that's really great. So we appreciate that very much. We appreciate Thank your you. support. And let all of the rest of you that couldn't make it tonight know how proud we are. Yeah. 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 Where's Riley? I don't know, but you know, Riley is committed at Wazoo, and he is yeah. going to be athletic trainer, right? No, we're, we're living together at Wazoo. You could ask him where he is tonight. I don't know. He's probably eating something or asleep. <laughs> That's my guess. Thank you very much for your time. Thank so, you. So, just real quick, oh. we, we, we want to recognize you with a certificate. It's not a lot, but but I think heartfelt from all of us. Oh, very much. One of the things you guys have proven um, that we knew is that hard work, commitment, and strong leadership make a difference and so on behalf of the school district and the school board we want to present you guys with this certificate that uh, you know, both to the teacher and the class and I just want to thank you for just representing and modeling uh, commitment and hard work.
pays off in everything, and you're demonstrating that. So, good job. Yeah, good job, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. I feel like we needed a, like a cake that's like operation looks like the game. Yeah, right. Well, Not a cadaver cake. It would be a fun fundraiser to challenge people to um, operation. No, wouldn't that be true. fun? Yeah. Incidentally, during spring break, we updated the gym and hung all of their past um, state achievements. Oh, that's cool. Oh, nice. Is there any room left on the walls after we Well, we, they actually have a larger, large piece of the wall, so they have room beyond uh, our time working. Just looking for a national championship yeah. to hang them yeah. That would be our first. <clears throat> that would be great. That would be pretty cool. We can make it in gold. And those are great now. It's really great when you come back in 10 or 15 years. I have daughters that graduated a long time ago. But when they come back, you can still see their names in there. It's really a cool thing. So look forward to that, too. All right. Um, that was fun. Now we're going to something a little bit less fun. And we have a plasma cutter approval. So my school CT program. Not that that's not cool, but... So I, I'm going to be speaking on behalf of uh, the CT program. And Matt Whiteman, is he here? No? So I'll, I will, I'm glad to take this. Um, so this was originally set up to, to attend the meeting on uh, April 24th and go pick it up. We got the, the plasma cutting through a grant. He's going to go down and pick it up himself so we can take some courses on it. Saves the district some shipping money, but wanted to get it here so it didn't have to wait any longer. So I recommend that you approve the travel out of state and overnight. Questions. So, yeah, is he using private vehicle and all this sort of thing and insurance and if it's stolen on the way home and all those accidents and all that kind of thing? I mean, he's doing this on his own kind Do you know of thing. Charlie's school vehicle or do you know? So, uh, school vehicle hasn't been um, requested, but we, Matt, Matt and I talked um, about him using a school vehicle and, and going down there. Um, you know, if, if he takes a, di a different route, but then we have to work on that. But um, I, I approved uh, him picking it up and saving that money. Um, I don't, don't know if you guys are aware of the current plasma cutter we have is uh, so old that it, the, well, it's kind of like uh, DOS. <laughs> wow. Vers versus, you know. Operation. Yeah. Can, we right, sell right. It, uh, can we sell it as an antique? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Well, now, as I understand it, there's three tables. I, the way it's put in here, it says three. Potentially, I guess it's it's a it's a much larger unit than the current one. Well, this so talks can, about the table, but not the plasma cutter itself. Or is it integral for the table? I I think that it's just a larger footprint. It, it, instead of it having a single table, it has three, and it'll do it larger mass. Um, well, it doesn't matter. I mean, are, are we having three stations for the students, or is it still just one? I think it's still just one. I'm, I'm saying not two thousand dollars seems like a pretty. I good think it's one. So, but my only concern is, you know, he's he's an employee at the time he's driving. He's uh, under all of our insurance kind of stuff. If it's his own private vehicle, then I'm not sure. You know. And he's, pull, he's going to be in a trailer, I would presume. Or the box truck. I, I don't know. Well, he, he well, has to have insurance in this state, either his own insurance or... Well, yeah, but he can't... You know, I mean... He, well, there's times we do both. Yeah, I understand that, but I mean, it has to be clear so that if there's something happens... So, yeah, so just, just as long as that's all worked out. You know, I don't care, I don't care what he does as long as we're all... Right. Well, his his private out. insurance would have to cover him driving his own motor vehicle. And he should know that before he leaves, yes. and leaves the door. He, hopefully he's listening. We can make certain. So I'll make certain approval tonight. Make certain that, Charlie, you visit with him and let him know that his insurance has to be covering. And if we can check and see if ours covers him while he's driving his own personal Well, and, Russ, and, and in particular, if we have school property, if he has school property in his vehicle and he has his private insurance, you know, I mean, there's a Even insurance. his homeowners might cover that. Well, we have an insurance expert here. Yeah. <laughs> it's usually covered under your home Anyway, policy. just make certain confirm insurances as applicable so that if it doesn't get here and there's an accident, he's covered and we're covered. And Dan, do you know anything about this insurance? I'm having a hard time hearing back here, but it's something about insurance and picking this piece of equipment up or something. Well, if it's his personal vehicles, he's got school property, you drive it on the road, gets in a wreck, 
who pays for the school stuff, who pays for his stuff, is he is he our on active duty active duty? <laughs> is he is he active employee at the time he's doing our job or uh, you know it's kind of like when Brandy goes very well could be very yeah. well could be interpreted that way if he's doing school business with a personal vehicle. We should we should school should, would be first first yeah, in line. We should straighten all that out, especially if he's taking his own truck. And he's going Saturday, yeah. so we have a few days. Right? The box van is not available <laughs> during that date. That it'll be over at Wenatchee for the uh, Apple Box. Oh, yeah. Is there a tra there's a trailer? Isn't there? The, there is a trailer um, that CTE owns. It's a horse trailer, I guess, more or, more or less. So. Well, the, the specifics on the table are quite specific about in terms of the size that's needed to get the table in there mm -hmm. and how it has to be secured because it's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a tool that needs to be supported in certain ways. If you stop quick, all the eggs roll over the front of the truck kind of thing. Yeah, it definitely needs to be strapped down. It must be. Well, it, the table is different than just a box. Right. Okay. Yeah. It just needs to be. It needs to be strapped down, and I'm assuming he's using a pickup truck or a van to pick this up. It's not going to fit in the back of a pacer. Or a well, this. I think what we've got to do is find out tomorrow what the plan is. So, that being the case, those are good questions. As long as we clear those things up and that is a safe and it's insured coverage, we can then approve Matt going and saving us two thousand dollars. We just want to make sure everything is is kosher and everybody's covered. That being the case, I have a motion. Yeah, a motion. I have a motion, and I learned something. I don't need a second in a board less than 12 people. I learned hey, little Robert's go. rules of order when I was in. You read that. So I will, I will um, start using the which book, version? The newest version. <laughs> um, so I have a motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Next up is the approval of facilities, final facilities plan. So if you remember last time when we left off, the first item was, um, are we going to build a facility? We're going to buy some used trailers. Right. And I think by the end of the meeting, leaning towards buying used trailers, but right. that no decisions have been made. Could you, could you bring me, you know, I wasn't at that last meeting, so if you can update me as we go along. Sure. Because I don't want to go through a bunch of stuff that right. you guys already decided about. Thank you, you guys. Thank you. Yes. Now go study. You probably need to. Yeah. <laughs> Jessica, send me the pictures of the sharks. So there, there were those two items, and one of the questions specifically we wanted to answer is if we had to clean the tanks or have it pumped, what were three or four companies' costs? And we have that's one of the updated items. The second thing was the portable. Okay. okay. Portable's already been ordered. Is the board still on? You know, feeling like we need to do that. And the final thing was the middle school roof. I think those are the four items. And well, there was playground material. Oh, and playground, playground equipment. Yep, got that. Got it. And that's a that's a half. I got wasn't it. even here. So the for the <laughs> bathrooms, we talked about what it would take to build here. We found Charlie located uh, portable ones that are like a, almost like an enclosed trailer, like a car holder. Is it the one that we have out there right now? <laughs> no, those are rentals, basically. We're leasing. But it's those. similar. It's a little similar. Bit bigger. So oh, let me, let me, let me let me enter. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. No, well, just an interjection here in terms of these trailers, Charlie. So, if we buy the trailers, can we lease them out to other people? I don't see why not. I can't sell them. We had we had actually that. talked about at the meeting that once their use is no longer needed at this campus, that we could use them for events that that we have as a as a district as well. well uh, but but, but in, yes. in regard to what these people are charging, we might be able to make <laughs> money on these. After things. we're done with them, they have value. We could at yeah. least sell them and possibly I don't know if we're gonna get the two we're rental looking business, at but. are bigger than these. Oh well. and buying both together are less than we will spend for these. Yes. No, I I'm not very smart but yeah, we decided, but we right needed now. to know how much it cost them to have in service, yeah. and we didn't have that information exactly. Now we have. over to my place, we pump them into my tank. No. <laughs> well, that's out of the bag. We won't that's be doing that. Problem. You know that, everybody? Uh, I think I have to keep going, but have a good night, everyone. Okay, sorry. Bye. Bye. That's good evening. Somebody came up. Sorry. So go ahead. Oh, I, you know, I've, we've got a lot of 
moving pieces and parts. We've done some things. The agenda page kind of goes over what has happened since the last time we were together. So I'll just kind of read from that. It, it, you know, since, since our last meeting, discussions between districts. Hey, can you make that just a little yeah. bit bigger for me? Thank you. Uh, since our last meeting, discussions between district staff and the city of Salton and Gold Bar were conducted to get a better sense of expected impact fee collections for calendar year 23 and 24. We talked last time. You know, we just didn't have a good a good feeling for that. So Dan, Charlie, and I sat down. Uh, with representatives from the city of Sultan, and then we had some email correspondence with Goldbar, and based on the information received from those folks is what was used. Uh, but I updated the equity balances as of the end of February. That was not done the last time, and the impact fee estimates that were received from those entities were updated into the previously shared cash flow projections. The updated analysis was then sent to DA Davidson on the 30th of March. Okay, so that's basically gets you up to speed on what we had done since the last meeting. I think those were some important missing bits of information that weren't included in the last time we talked, which now have been. Um, Kayla, can you go back to that? I want to read that last paragraph. There we go. Uh, the magnitude of a new LGO will depend on decisions whether to move forward or not, related which Dan just talked about the four items that are out there. Uh, uh, SES portable classroom, SES two portable bathrooms, SMS finishing, the re-roofing that was started a couple of years ago, and the SES playground equipment. So those are the four main decision points basically that we're at right now. The opinion rendered by DA Davidson is that under uh, is that further indebtedness, indebtedness has a high degree of risk and could obligate the general fund to transfer funds should the assumptions used in the analysis prove in amount or timing of receipt to be inaccurate. So and then I think we did send you also to a more detailed response from, from Corey Plager who's the managing director of DA Davidson also too based on what we had sent to him. So since that, since this was put together, like I said, Charlie got some estimates today on the servicing of the bathrooms. We got a term sheet today, late this afternoon, from Cashmere Valley Bank. Have not had an opportunity to put those two bits of information into this analysis yet because they were received late this afternoon. Well, today, but the, the term sheet was re received fairly late this afternoon. Um, we did go through, like I said, and input the impact fees revised the state forest proceeds, so those are included in this analysis. Um, and then based on those, was able to kind of uh, firm up and have a better sense of the numbers than we did a couple weeks ago. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Basically, the way it looks is that to do the middle school roof, to do a, the portable, to do, uh, again, it's an estimate of $400,000 to bring a portable online. Playground equipment I have in here is as a hundred, the district portion to be $100,000 and the portable bathrooms at $150,000 would be six hundred and fifty. dollars To fund that would take about a $2 million LGO. You Which might say, standard. wasn't it more than that last time? Yes, right. it was. It was more than that last time for two things. Number one is, is was able to balance up through February, which I had not done last time. And number two, Kayla, if you want to go to that the cash flow sheet. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, They're all cash flow sheets. Well, yeah, let's see. Which one? Ten, <laughs> ten, 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 ten. Uh, look at, yeah, other capital projects, that one. You'll notice on this, if you make that a little bit larger, previously that column marked impact fees did not exist last time. Those are based on the numbers that we received from our meetings with the city of Goldbar, uh, not me, but correspondence with the city of Goldbar and meetings with the city of Sultan. So, increased revenue. A little bit of increased beginning balance as far as the true up for February decreased the amount of the LGO that was needed. Okay, now these are based on the numbers that they have. The, what we've done as far as and that's what dovetailing what Corey said. I have taken the numbers as far as impact fees from the municipalities and basically spread them evenly. Okay, they don't come in in that manner. They don't come in evenly every month. Okay, so we've taken the overall amount, basically just divided by 12, and put that amount in each month for calendar year 23, calendar year 24. They're not going to arrive in that exact manner. <laughs> but the idea is, is the met, we're hoping that the total amount will is based on what we were told we would, they anticipate us receiving in calendar year, calendar year 23, 24 combined. So that's what we have for you. Um, the items, like I said, what you see over there, the 1428, that's the roof of the middle school. I'm looking at the other capital projects column there. Uh, and the kind of the teal color, uh, the aqua blue color, and the 650000 again, if you look, you can't see that, but there is a call out that would be the portable at 400000 
playground at 100,000 and portable bathrooms at 150,000. That's how that number is arrived. <coughs> so, the, if you go back to the sheet when they reviewed it and they said it would increase risk, did that include, did you have all these impact fees in the revenue when you sent that over to Yes. Them? Okay. Yes. So, what, what you are seeing is exactly what I sent okay. to him. Yes. So, the risk is that they don't believe all these revenues will appear? Um, I think what he said is the time, you know, the amount or the timing. I think is is, you know, let's say that they're that they come. Let's give you an example. We reached out to Gold Bar. There is a 39 unit development that's going out in Gold Bar. I think it's called Fall View. I think it's what it's called. It's off of May Creek Road. Um, initially, we had kind of heard through the grapevine that all 39 of those would come online in calendar year 23. Reaching out to them, it's like, no, that's probably not going to be the case could be all till calendar year 24. So basically, based on those correspondence, I took and split it. I split half and I gave half to 23 and half to 24. They might all come to 24. Right. You know, I, I, it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when. Can I, can I just interject with Corey's last final statement? Yeah. You, you've read that, right? Uh -huh. So what he's saying is that as long as the leadership team Mm -hmm. and the school board are willing to commit apportionment or other undesignated general fund revenues if anything's going right. wrong, mm -hmm. then he's perfectly happy with proceeding. Correct. I agree with that. Okay. Yeah, so, they'll bring that up. I, I think I, that's I all I'm that. okay. for that he's I wonder if, thing. what would he have said if we would have said we wanted our $2 million LGO to be 2.4? Uh -huh. Because you don't pay back immediately the rate is really fantastic compared to what we're seeing out there in the market right now mm -hmm. and that would alleviate whether we get 86 86 86 it, it gives a buffer that's slightly larger right the the impact fees like I said basically we took what what they told us that they expected to see in calendar year 23 I basically took that divided by the number of months remaining in calendar year right. 23 and spread spread that dollars right are we going to get eighty-six thousand seven hundred forty-three dollars in April? Maybe not. No, <laughs> you know, but I think that's why they think there's a risk where we may have to take things from <clears throat> the general fund. Mm -hmm. But the reason they see that risk is if you look at our ending cash balance in the first couple months, if eighty-six doesn't come in, we're down to forty thousand right. dollars. Whereas if our LGO had a cushion of mm -hmm. a few hundred thousand dollars, those numbers, even if we miss several months in a row, mm -hmm. we still stay solvent without taking away from the students. And as soon as the does come in, yeah, we're gonna pay 3.75% interest, but waiting on projects can cost us more in inflationary costs mm -hmm. than the 3.75%. Yeah, you're correct. The, the 86, 743, like I said, is just simple math, dividing the number out. Right. What'll well, probably happen is you'll probably have zero, 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 300,000, right. zero, 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 you know, it'll just come but in those one zeros, day. if they hit three months in a row, Right. put you into a negative on that chart. Yes, it does. And the June, like I said, the reason I think we talked about this last time is, is it is permissible as long as this, as long as this LGO closes in June, you can postpone your first interest and in principal right. payments by 12 months. Which we learned. So we, we will risk have that close in June. The right. student body because it's later in the year. Right. So I think what I would ask is if we could push the LGO up to a higher amount so that okay. our writ, our I mean, we're trying to get this done with keeping $10 in So the, the next bank. year is the tough year, and, and, and trying to get through that one, because we're doing this in kind of an unconventional way. Mm -hmm. But, you know, yeah. So, I get it. So, if next year's a tough year, mm -hmm. then why don't we make the LGO enough so that it covers that, so that we always stay above? Because as soon as we find out we have the money, look, Monies came in, we get mm -hmm. all the building permit stuff, mm -hmm. then we pay it back early. Right. And we don't pay the 3.75, but I don't know why we'd put ourselves at a risk of barely borrowing enough at, at a Take rate that is substantially for... lower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I, our our you make, you, it makes good sense. Right. Right. Which I, I understand and what you're saying, yes. I was just trying to do this analysis and keep and, it. And, and this is perfect. Minimize it's borrowing it's, it's as much the minimized as possible. borrowing, and right. that's your job. Well, and you'll have a method to pay it back because right now, just in the, on the developments, we, know, we don't know when they're going to happen, but there's at least two or three hundred impact fees out there to collect, right. and, and they're on the higher amounts. And remind me how much we have when you looked at how much we could borrow on an LGO based on the... We could go to about three million. Yeah, well, currently, Corey's nice thing is, is that we have 
our, our capacity is 8.6 million. We currently have 4.6, so we're about 4 million short before we this. Hit the cap. Be, no, before we do anything more. So, so that would not include we, this 2 million or whatever that 4 million is. right now. So if we said we wanted 2.7, we'd still have 1.3 and we'd be in the clear. Correct. You'd be you'd be north of about 80 percent of your right capacity now. at that point. Yeah. You'd be you'd be north of probably 80 percent of your. So I would ask then, if you capacity. haven't already, look at where the dip is next year. If things don't align, so that we have we borrow enough because we have plenty, we can borrow four. And I and I know that we're talking about borrowing two or three or four million dollars, but mm -hmm. these are expensive projects and paying 3.75 percent. I don't know if anybody out there's been getting a loan lately. That that's. Unbelievably low. Yeah, three eight three eight five. Three eight five. Yeah. Sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, it is. It's very. That's it's a, crazy. Low. Yeah, that's yeah. Very aggressive pricing as far as the loans. We're not concerns. talking about a whole big add-on to the LGL. I mean, we're only talking two hundred thousand. Right. Compared to what we're thinking right. about already, right. I, I just think it. You know, I was uncomfortable with getting dipping down to that low, and mm -hmm. then when we dip that low, and two months of no money coming in, and we will be. Then all of a sudden it's like, all right, well, our general fund is suffering now. We get down to 1% instead of 4%, and we want to try to avoid that. Right. But you that's are, what it's there for. It's just we don't want to get to zero. You are correct, Russ. That based on the way that we have the flows coming in, which they're not going to come in exactly in that way, no. okay? They're not. You're going to, like I said, you're going to get months where you have zero, zero, zero. They may have 350000 then you have zero. You know, they just, these developers tend to come in and pay for a whole chunk of them at one time. We were time. talking in the budget, way they budgeted it for us, coming in like tens. Which makes sense because they, you know, they get ten online. They got to pay right. for the impact fees to do them. Once they're sold out, they the have way. ten more. Right. right. Yep. The other thing is, <clears throat> as as these funds come in, whether state forestry or whatever, you can come to us monthly, quarterly, and say, hey, look, we're now at a point where I can't see us ever getting below nine hundred thousand. We might say, throw four hundred thousand dollars towards our loan in an early payment that cuts off right. the three eight five, right. and we're still being good stewards of the state's money. But of our citizens' money, I just think that that's the way yeah. we go, and we can take the risk of we're going to run out of money, or the risk of all of a sudden we're trying to do a roof two years later. Mm -hmm. We have more damage to interior walls. The cost of doing the roof is higher, mm -hmm. and it, it isn't going to get cheap. Right. So yeah, from, that would help. From two million, what are we going to do? Well, I think they need to tell us that if the risk is next year, I see it early this year, but if the risk is next year. How much more does that need to bubble over two million for us to feel? Yeah, it's the next twelve months that are next twelve to fourteen months that are the the, the difficult. Just because you've got all of your resources for your levy proceeds are being pledged to the building right now. Every every dollar is going to that building, I and so went to two point five. I don't know if that's enough. I I would say let's say, what if no impact fees come in for six months? Or even yeah, okay. or let's say nine months, three quarters like a year, no impacts, and then they all hit. Right. That would be basically nine times eighty-six, or about seven hundred fifty thousand mm -hmm. give or take. So I would I would say do two point seven five or two point eight. Okay. If some emergency arose in the future, we still have one point two or one point two five left in an LGO availability. Mm -hmm. We hope we don't have to tag it, but if we do have to tag it, it will likely be at a higher interest rate. So yes, I understand what you're saying. We're saying just take the, stick with the estimates given to us by the municipalities as far as total collections for calendar year 23 and 24, but push them further into calendar year 23. Yeah, push them down. Just as a and borrow as a enough so yeah. that we stay okay. afloat. We can certainly do that because as those come in, we'll be ahead of our plan. Then every month they come yeah. in, we'll be ahead of it. And the only caveat to that for me would be that we would not spend the money that we borrowed in excess that we didn't need on some new. I agree. Yeah. No, yeah. this is only yeah. earmarked yeah. for these items. Unless a tornado hits the roof and we have to right. house kids for an extreme emergency, but I agree. Yeah, okay. I think that we're certainly, as our cash flow starts to straighten out, which would be fall of 24. When fall of 20, we get the fall of 24 collection, then the things will smooth out significantly right. at that point in time. Then I think, as is, as is witnessed in the red column, which is F, is the debt service payments. We need to be as aggressive as possible in yes. paying this debt down, because the way well, the way the way the analysis they looked at, if and it, it wouldn't happen, but if all of these issues went full term, you're looking at about four hundred and seventy five thousand dollars in interest based on the indebtedness, and that was at two million. So if we're going to go two five, it would be north of a half a million dollars basically in interest in interest payments. Okay. I really want to pay that off as so quick as possible, and I and I think what we would like if we agree to this is a monthly report on 
where we're at, a separate report from what you provide, you know, with all the regular numbers, mm -hmm. that just updates this chart. Right. So that we can say, look, it looks like because we got way more forestry monies than we thought, or we got, you know, all of a sudden we got a hundred of these impact fees in, then we start paying it back. And so look at just the, enough cushion so that we're not, you know. And you know, that's in the document that we write. Yeah. So, so up, up there on the thing, look at the debt service, the red column. So you can see we're taking just the minimum payment, sixty-seven thousand, sixty-seven thousand. When we get to May of, when we get to June of twenty-four, that's when you have to make the first payments on this, on this new one because it's been postponed right. for twelve months. So it jumps up. I haven't fixed that two hundred eleven. It might be a little bit higher than that. But then another two hundred eleven. These are semi-annuals. But then as you go two eleven, but then once we get, then we can start making some really aggressive payments, six hundred thirty-five thousand. 513,000, 513,000, you get to 2.4 million. Right. Because it, all of a sudden. The collections have come in. The collections have come in. The building is satisfied. The building is no longer taking all of those dollars. You can divvy those dollars out to technology and maintenance and operations projects. <clears throat> it's it's just a cash, it's managing cash. So it when is. do we have to uh, agree to this uh, loan? Well, we want it to close in June. So I would, I, I need to get with Mr. McNeil. I told him I would reconnect with him and with Tom Brown, both Does the cashier. put at risk locking in the current rates? Yeah, I'll, I can talk with them this week and we can get the documents going and things like that. The industry is on pins and needles and I think we need to We want to lock it in as soon as possible. Right. Right. I can see that bumping up 500 basis points overnight. Yeah. So I will talk with, I will talk with um, both of them but tomorrow. But if you want it to close in June, do you have to... Well, it seems like we should be able to do that in April to make it close in June. Yep, we that's really right. need to probably bring it forward. I think it needs to be at the next meeting. In two, now we do have to, but I have to. Or before, if, if you guys. Well, but I have to post, I have to put a notice in the paper for two consecutive weeks and okay. all that stuff that I've got. Do it as quick as possible because we have to schedule it. There are two consecutive uh, scheduled meetings, like Friday and Thursday and Friday next week. <laughs> <laughs> has to be published. Everything you're saying is being recorded. Yeah, published in a newspaper of general circulation for two consecutive weeks, with the second publication being no less than seven days before the meeting of which the resolution okay. is adopted. Is well, it is our intent to do that. So, yeah, so I will talk with that. I'll talk with Jim tomorrow, and we'll lay out the calendar as far as how that he has already started drafting some polyp, some boilerplate language. And I told him after the meeting tonight, I could give him more direction on the scope. That's the same thing. Tom asked me. How much are you needing? I told him two million at that point in time. Am I hearing two five, two seven? I, I would push towards two seven five, two eight. That's what I was thinking. Two seven, two seven five zero. Okay. Again. Okay. There's there's no magic to this. It's just trying to leave enough room that we don't. Correct. And Correct. then we'll, like I said, we'll have resources to make some pretty aggressive payments once we get a couple years into this thing. My goal is to have this paid off in four years. Is yeah. my is my goal. Um, and I, based on what we have right here now, obviously nobody knows the future. <laughs> so, something catastrophic could happen that we would have to deal with. But based on what we have right here, um, well, some good things could happen too. The state forestry lands you yeah. have in here over a period of several years only having seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yep, we could see more revenue. And I believe we will. I, I, they right now they've got a surplus of lumber at the actual, the actual mills. Oh. I've been on the phone with them trying to figure because we've got five to seven harvests all through our district, they're not doing much right now. Well, that makes sense because the building slowed down. The building bit. slowed down and they were, so, they were cutting really aggressively for it. Right? So, Ed, I do appreciate you bringing that. I just wanted to, you know, for the record is, again, just, we all know this. The general fund, though, is the fund of last resort. If, if yeah, for some fun. reason we are unable it to... It always is. Right. If, if, for some, if for some reason we were unable to meet those obligations, then a transfer from general fund would be how they would move. Deal with that. I, I, don't, I don't see a lot of negative stuff in our numbers up here. I mean, we don't see a lot of scary stuff. And we and make the budget for, the, if, if we see something like that, we have to adjust the budget. But that's why we have a $750,000 opportunity with this LGO being a little mm -hmm. bit larger to right. make certain if things don't happen perfectly, we're not tapping the general fund. Correct. I would not budget for a transfer if, if we were seeing that four months down the road we were going to have difficulty, I would come to you and you would adopt a resolution right. for a transfer to deal with that so it would be a specific issue that you would be approached with at that time. So. Yes, and this updated every month will help us keep okay. it And I think just to go back to Ed's point, once we have cost of the four items, just make it public, here's the actual cost. Yes. 
um, you know, what the two millions have been estimated, correct? Yeah, the, o the only thing I'm trying to That's in all, the, all this conversation is that we need to be on this like right now. We've got to schedule yes. those two weeks of notice of mm -hmm. publication because the banking system is it's changing crazy right now. Absolutely, minute by minute. Mm -hmm. I'm going to speak, but I didn't have a chance to, to connect directly by phone with uh, Tom Brown from Cashmere, but what we talked with about, what he and I talked about last week, um, in the last week, was that he was going to speak with his CFO and that there was going to be a 45-day rate lock. So I believe this is a 45-day rate lock. Don't quote me on that. I'll confirm that with Tom tomorrow. But that was how we had our conversation on Friday, and I got this term sheet today. Well, we so, want to assume we have a 30-day, you know what I mean? Right. There's no, nothing get in the way of this time-wise, and if we right. do need to call a special meeting, yeah. we can, in our bylaws, we can have a, everyone can be on a Zoom meeting mm -hmm. in any time, so it can be a 10 minute. if you have a rate lock, yeah. they can manipulate that. So. Yeah, the fee becomes 500 basis points or so. Okay, can you go so back to the sheet that caused the cost of servicing the restrooms? I thought Kayla. It was up here. Some people back to that because it's yeah. how many gallons are these tanks in these? Four fifty. Oh, okay. He's going to talk. Each. So two ninety. I think it's two hundred ninety-two dollars to pump one. Current ones are how many gallons? How many? The ones out here. How many gallons? One hundred and fifty. One hundred and fifty. Well, so each. You pump them once a week. In theory, yeah. So it's sixty-five cents a gallon. Yeah, so the salt and pepper one, that's a 165 bucks for them to come out plus 65 cents a gallon. Plus $292 if it's full. So $300. $300 right. The other two. But the, the one six, the 465 is the cheaper than. The one time. The service fee is only one time? One time, yeah. Because oh, it's setting up an account. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Or well, that is the cheapest way. Yeah, yeah this is not. Uh, no, these numbers are not huge. That's per visit. Yes. Right. 165 each time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. I talked to, I, I emailed Renee about that because I said this changes the game for me because. If it's 165 each time and they come and empty a full tank, then Honey Bucket is cheaper. Yeah. Because 292 and 165 is. I've got her email. I'll just read it. Kayla, I asked Kayla. Kayla, we both had this question. We emailed Renee and she said, it's, I'll just read it to you. I have that for What does it say? It says, so from today at 2.59, Renee said, I spoke to Monica at Sultan Pumper. We will only get charged the 165 service fee one time, no matter how many portable restrooms we have on the campus. So does that mean 165 well, each visit? You're correct. That doesn't that doesn't yeah. say yeah. that. Yeah. That, that, that could, could be, be each time they campus. come out, regardless. Yeah. I think, it, I think I, I, that's what I would guess it is. 165 per day. One first the, time they come to campus. If they come every week, every week you hit for 165 plus 65 well, cents. That's not cheaper than Honey Bucket. Right. Yeah, I think that's correct. Unless, you know, unless we're emptying them sooner than. Uh, unless, unless we're doing it every other week. Right. Do you know how much they're being used right now? How much volume? Uh, they're pumped getting pumped week? twice a week right now. Is that how a, many gallons? Are they being pumped twice a week because they need to be pumped, or they're just pumping them twice a week? Oh, if you want to get in there and measure the level. Well, of no, no, but I mean, <laughs> I mean, basically have to stick a great big stick down the diesel. Oh. Push it the tank. Yeah. We'll get you a big stick for those. How yeah. About that? But yeah. I mean, they could be coming out and pumping a half empty. Yeah, tank. That's true. We need to know that. And they're 100 and how many gallons? 150. Okay. So there's no doubt that a four, 500 or 450 gallon tank at a current rate of right. filling is going to be more than adequate for a week. Yeah. Correct. Unless we have way more students or there's a lot better food in the cafeteria or something. Yeah, I'm guessing twice a week. Okay. But if we're saying $165 service charge plus $300 per unit, that's $765 per week? Per service. Per service. But it would be if we have to do it once a week. Per week. So but you multiply by four, so that's twenty, it's almost $3,000 a month. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at... $36,000 a year. Yeah. yeah. And oh, not because we, we are going to fill no, up. No, 20, 28000 yes. maybe something. It'd be less than thirty, but probably close to $30,000 a year. And we're still shopping. Right. And That's that, lower than we thought when we talked about this initially. Yeah. 
And that is not in my analysis. This we got today, this is not in my analysis yet. It's not a deal breaker, but it's not. Well, that's why we have 750000 That's <laughs> Give you a little more cushion. <laughs> yes, it will. <clears throat> 750000 to pay for a lot of pumping. Yes. <laughs> yes. We need to send out a flyer. You have to go to the bathroom before you come to school, <laughs> right before you head out the house. That's right. I'm kidding. Okay, I will reach out to Mr. McNeil tomorrow to expedite the time frames. I'll reach out to Mr. Brown at Casual Valley Bank and verify the rate lock and tell him that we, based on the conversation from the board this evening, we're now looking at 2.75 million versus 2 million. And likely with early payment. Uh, and likely to be paid it back early. Right. right. Uh, they, they always don't. Have, back, there's no free payment. Up a couple points. A couple points? Then I don't think. I think the biggest risk is it goes up half a basis. Half, 500 yeah. basis points. Half a half a point. Tomorrow. <laughs> it's still. It, I thought we were going to be in the upper fours, the low fives. Okay. That's so, where I thought we so would. So if, if he talks to his CFO and they come back and they say, "Oh, gee, we've been talking about it and we've got a half a point or something yeah. like that," we're He's, still a go. He spoke I, I to the CFO yes. this morning. He was the CFO was supposed to be back in the end of last week. Yeah. I talked to Tom. I think it was Friday, and he had hoped that they'd been on Friday. He was not. He was going to speak with him this morning. So okay. Okay. I am assuming that All after I spoke with him, in in the in that range where we are to go. Okay. What what timeline do you want me to use for moving forward on the purchasing and how fast he can get to make certain the money's in the account so that we can do it. As fast as that money is available, so that we don't go into negatives. That's the answer. You know, and no, I mean, as fast as we can do it, that we don't go below 150 thousand, because that's where it starts to get really scary. We have millions going around, and we're down to 150 in the capital budget. Yeah, right. Because yeah. so much of it's tight. Yeah. Fast, yes. fast, fast, fast. It's okay. Uh, so, how much difference does say the playground uh, money? Make if we postpone that for a year. I don't know that we can answer that. I know Playgrounds, but I mean, well, that's that's capital project budget. You're talking about yeah. the hundred fifty thousand. So the playground is a hundred thousand dollars, and we postpone it. That changes all these numbers. It does. That's why I would be a proponent for not postponing anything because I don't think the increase in price will be less than three point eight five percent. Say if we're in trouble, we can postpone the playground. Oh, I see what you're saying. If something anything. happened, unless it's already ordered. It's, it's not over, right. but the playground, I mean, I would really just advocate we do it if we can. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's what, what, what I have what you're saying. What I'm saying is we, we can stay within these boundaries with a little bit of jiggling here and there. Yeah. Like we jiggle on the portal. Mm -hmm. The other thing that gives us some room is, which we didn't talk about, is under the tech-related. Um, Kayla, if you want to bring that up just real quick, then we can, I don't want to belabor things too much, make that bigger. If you see those two numbers, the 393,000 and the 170,000, 393,000 is in red. That indicates it's a reimbursement. Okay. It's what's called ECF or Electronic Connectivity Fund. It was done through part of the COVID relief thing. <clears throat> it was for a variety of connectivity things that we've got for students. We went and forward and purchased those things out of existing resources. So Dave purchased those last year out of existing resources. We're awaiting reimbursement. Reimbursement has been delayed. It's not gonna, not that it's not going to happen, but it's been bumped back several times. And Dave's coming up quickly to the time when he really needs to order his next round of laptops to have them in time for school for next year. I don't know that I'm going to have that 393,000 before he has to place that order. So there's a little bit of you know timing issues going on there too. So what's pushing it back? Uh, the federal government. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, and I think I'm looking at different numbers here. Um, this is capital projects. Uh, no, this, this is tech. tech. There are different tabs at the bottom. This a is the tech-related tab. It doesn't work well on. Yeah, you just have screenshots is what you have, but this is the tech-related tab. And I just wanted to mention the ECF. That, well, that, how long, what is the professional opinion of one will see this? We had a meeting with our, we have an ECF consultant, or an E-rate consultant, I should say, that we've worked with for many, many years. Uh, Dave and he and I had a conversation at the beginning of December. Uh, was in, told by him that we had everything in that we needed to. Fast forward to last week, uh, he said it had been put in two weeks ago. So somehow- Have they reimbursed other people already for this? He said that uh, he works with Anchorage School District, and Anchorage School District has been waiting two and a half months for theirs from the time of submission for two and a half months. They haven't seen their money yet. 
So, um, and, well, if, and when Dave needs to order laptops, how much is that going to be? It's going to be probably, well, you can see that there, the 200000 that you see across that yeah. in April, that one right there, that's the cost of the laptops is about $200,000. Okay. So he wants to make a $200,000 purchase with the idea when I put this together is we would have easily had that money, that reimbursement money by then, and that would have been more than enough to seed that purchase. Now, if because of timing to order them and get them the lead time, he may need to make that purchase prior to us getting that reimbursement by a couple of months. Do your numbers reflect our discussion today? Uh, yes, they do. Dave and I, yes. You put the Levino in there? The what? The, the, yep. The other brand yep. of the computer. Yep. Okay. Yep. Because the ECF is only one year. Once it, once those two red numbers are done, it's done. We get no more money from them. I understand that. But yeah. we, we chose a different vendor that... Lenovo. And With Lenovo. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of Dell. Dell is just gouging. So you pay afterwards, yeah. after you get them versus... Yep. Um, yeah, you lose both ways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's just for this next... next okay. Program. Anyway. Okay, so I will reach out to those two gentlemen tomorrow then. Questions? I'd like updates on when, if, if the person helping us with that $390,000, mm -hmm. if we have more reference than one large school district in Alaska. I'd like to know the ones that have been reimbursed, how long they waited, not the, okay. how long people have been waiting. Okay. I think that would be valuable to know. Okay, I'll reach out to Dave. Because then if it goes longer than what people have been waiting, we have a level of we can complain at a louder volume. Yes. So I'm just trying to make sure that people can do the things that they have <laughs> yeah. scheduled to do when they need to do them. Thanks for that okay. update. Mm -hmm. yep. Anything else from this portion? Okay. Any questions for him before we let him escape? I was thinking we haven't had these that long, so we haven't gone through really a full winter with them. What do we have in place to make sure they don't so the, the the lines, well, there's a, a line from the district office hose that goes to there and it has a heat tape on it. Um, that one through some of those freezes was fine. The one from, the, there was a small section that was the tape, like there was like 12 inches where the tape didn't cover, it froze in that spot. So we had to undo the joint, knock it out. But, um, so we have more heat tape on that one. Well, that will all go back with right. that one. Okay. We'll have to outfit it somehow similar. What about the tanks? Hmm? The tanks. The holding tanks. The holding tanks. Um, well, they're plugged in. The, the, they're, we have three circuits that are dedicated to the, each unit. One unit is for heating of the water in the unit, one is for heating of the water to the unit, and one is for heat in the unit, and lights. So you're wondering if there's a, I don't know what to call that, the holding area. Yeah. If it froze and broke, that'd be a... That'd be a problem. That'd be an interesting problem. That'd be a very you want bad deep boots. problem. I'd, oh, I got a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dan or Charlie, did I miss anything? No, but the one, I had one question because the, the, the second method on the laptops was that we didn't have to pay up front, that the vendor would would put in for the reimbursement. Yeah, I talked to Dave, you and I had a meeting afterwards, and that was the way I have it set up. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. It's lower than We had a separate meeting. <clears throat> so, yes, we'll. I would anticipate us bringing you something at the next meeting in a couple weeks for consideration. But Again, that we do have certain noticing requirements and things that Start we have to. Start them as soon as you have the. Yeah, we have to fulfill, but we will get that going as quickly as possible. Okay. So then the board wouldn't take action until our next meeting. Is that and that's as soon as it sounds like we can. That that's going to be. Pushed we want to take down. action starting tomorrow as soon as we possibly. Well, you can, you've approved two seven five, right? Yes. Yeah. Two point seven five. Two point seven five. It's a matter of having the right resolution paperwork in place and get it printed in the newspaper. Right. So you wouldn't be able to, uh, I would say that we would probably bring the resolutions and the documents for your approval on May the 8th, because again, we, we can't close until the middle of June, so uh, we've still got time. Okay. Um, we'll have to do noticing, I'll probably get Jim to get the documents to me 
end of this week, we'll notice the next two weeks, and then we'll bring it probably up to the meeting a month from now on the 8th. Okay. The same meeting next month. Okay. And that is, make certain we find out that that is timely so that we can mm -hmm. close in June. Yeah, I'll talk to both of those gentlemen tomorrow. I think that's more than enough. Thank you. Next up is discussion of National School Board Association. Um, Gigi wrote a really nice analysis and it will be displayed. Um, four of us went to the National School Board Conference in Orlando, Florida. Um, each day we selected different conferences to go to. I think there was only one, over one, maybe one or two overlaps. I will present what I intended at the next meeting. I just didn't have time to prepare it like Gigi did. Would you like to present? Yeah, I didn't have time. I mean, I can go over what classes I took, but... Yes, can well, There's nobody here to hear it anyway. <laughs> Do you have anything you want to add? Yeah, I can, you know, I, I, I think the biggest challenge for me was we had one of the best apps for an event like this I've yeah. ever seen. Fantastic. Yeah. And is which one are you going to pick? Because yeah. um, there was a lot some of the time frames, there was two or three that were really good. So I just gave you some real relevant ones that I talk about a fair amount. But there was a there was a number of different ones that I went to. And so in no particular order, preschool for this is a this was a school district in Kansas, and they you know similar to us, they and, and many other districts recognized that you know their kindergarten students were coming in behind. So what are you going to do about that? And so behind what? Behind a, a you know being a, a level of readiness. Well, what do we define that? I mean, I, I see there's specific kind of tests for that. Well, I'd like to see what those parameters are. Well, we've got them. We, yeah, I've got it here in the district. And we do the same tests as every other school district in the state. Well, in, re in reading this stuff, I don't know, does this mean, oh, the kid has to count from one to five, he has to know his color? Some of those things. There's but I don't know. Physical, I don't know that social. Kansas does. Is Kansas, is that what they're saying when they say their kids are... Do they use the same football? Do they have the same standards? They don't. We use what's called walk kits. Well, I don't. Six different standards. I don't know what Kansas's is, but I think the point of the whole thing is, as a school district and a community, they recognize that from day one, they were in, in, into heavy remediation, trying to get kids caught up to start. And the taxing on the school district and, and everybody to try to do that is significant. You know, it, I, guess it, I guess it's... Maybe I'm looking at it from the 30,000 point of view, foot view of things, but, um, you know, and I'm old and it was a long time ago. We didn't have any of this stuff when we were going to kindergarten. Dick you know, and Jane was still being read. Whatever, right? whatever you did, <laughs> all right? The point is we still got graduates going out of the school that don't have 20% competency in math. You know, we got state champion anatomy players. Yeah, Go figure. That doesn't give you the uh, uh, one lick uh, more on the 20% competency in math of the graduating seniors. And that's not only the school. I mean, this is yeah. this is like Well, Ed, that's part of why I'm bringing this up. Yeah, and this starts with the foundation we built. Nothing, right nothing we do. We went down to Olympia, for example, and, and nobody talked about, let's get these kids to do their uh, memorize their mathematic table, the multiplication tables, and uh, by the fourth grade or whatever. And, um, and that's not happening. And I don't understand why. That's all. I mean, I, I see all this, the, the curriculum that we had down there in Olympia had nothing to do with performance of our kids learning more history, real history, or learning how to read, or learning how to write, or learning how to do math. None, none of that down there in Olympia had anything to do with that. And that's, that's our primary job here. So anyway, I... I get what anyway, you're saying, yeah. and, and it's it, often it's a little tangent, it's an important tangent, but I think if we if we start with kindergartners, and we can set up what are the parameters are, if we're lower than a lot of the school districts in the state, we need to look at that, because if you build a house with a poor foundation, it doesn't get better by building a great house on top of it. Well, we, put, we, we had all these issues 50 years ago, we put people on the moon, we're sending them out of space, we're doing all this thing, and now we can't even tell whether they're a boy or a girl. I mean, it's well, like, that's a different yeah. subject. No, it's different. really not. It's, it's really not. But it's, anyway, I, I'm sorry I went off down the road. I apologize. I, was, I, <laughs> I went to classes that were related to school safety and some of the things that went on. If you want to continue with Yeah, that. that's just one that I went to, and it was a group of folks that solved an issue. Beyond the alarm was the 
Teton Valley. This is in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Very rich place to live, but they too have a big mental health issue. And so, um, not knowing anything about it, the Cook um, Center for Human Connection, this is something that's designed for parents. I pulled it up online. I've looked at it. Does it put it all in the school system? You know? And, well, uh, it's a, it, it takes both sides. I mean, when you have a kid that isn't being parented by the traditional system and is being focused on every night by the parents, it's hard for us when, to make up for it here. And I looked at it, there's, there's a million courses parents can choose from, but it, it, it is a way for them to choose and, and utilize something that doesn't, you know, because we aren't just a school, we become a social service agency as well. And that's the way it's been for a while. And, you know, it, and so this is, a, this is just, I thought it was interesting in how they did that. Um, what do we got here? School facilities, Bond Plan, another school district in Kansas. They had a 6,000 student district. They had a middle school of 1,000 kids. They needed to do a, a lot of upgrade. They passed a they not subject, $140 million bond is what they did. But they divided it up. And the board kind of were on one deal and said, look, we've got to do something here. And the superintendent was kind of on a different track. And they, they went about it from two different, two different perspectives where the board just said, look, Let's figure out what we're going to do, and we'll go out and hold meetings and, and get everybody on board. And then the superintendent did a number of meetings uh, with that. So that's that's one way that they did it. I thought it was really really interesting. Um, this was you know a guy from I uh, can't remember what state he was from, but this was just the basic good human service, you know, or good customer service, you know, just like oh, yeah, good in any business. And I thought you know it was kind of the guy's presentation was a little bit corny, but. His messaging, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't argue with it. Is you know, we, our students and our families are our customers. You know, need to understand, and, and sometimes the customers are happy, and sometimes they're not. You need to figure out, you know, how to best serve them. Um, curriculum in the science of reading. This this was interesting because it really focused on something that I think goes back a long time, and you know, talked about phonics. And I've, talked I've, about what? Phonics. phonics. Are we are we doing sight words in our? Uh... Yeah. Yes. Boy, that's deadly. I've read, I've read so much on that. We, we need to change that. We do. I think sight words and phonics is what the study suggests at the same time. Because uh, I think you, you have to have phonics. You have to have the phonics. You have to have phonics. You have to have phonics. Do but the they do. I, I know my grandkids are all in elementary, yeah, and they're doing phonics and sight words. Yeah. But so, I'm going to survey. You know, Mike and I were talking. About, we're going to do some survey and see what's happening because it. Um, from the time we adopted the curriculum, we're going out for a couple of years, you know, things went downhill. But we're going to survey and see what kind of support people need, because we do year-to-year -year training. But I thought this was really interesting, very interesting. And probably the one of the favorite things for me was President Bush's daughter. She was fantastic. She was, she was just a real human being, you yeah. know. And it was she fun was, listening to her. I couldn't see how she was going to deliver to all the school board members, but it was perfect. It was it was the best of it. It was. The second one that was good was the guy that founded Siri, talking yeah. about AI. Well, oh yeah, that was very amazing. Intense. Now, do you know that in Europe, I won't mention the country. I try not to mention the country. Uh, they put AI into uh, counseling, and now you can uh, over there. You can call, and I've got a problem. I'm in motion. I, I, this all had to do with environmental stuff. He was very distraught, an adult guy, married guy. And he called AI. And he was talking to AI, right? Yep. He committed suicide. AI talked him into committing suicide. <laughs> well, that's that sad. Just that's a bad few, use. That just happened. And he didn't month. ask him a math question because <laughs> they haven't figured that out yet. Yeah. yeah. Well, AI is going to. But I mean, that's, that's where we're headed. In three well, to five years. Kind of it's scary, but it's also, there's nothing going to slow it down, and the AI will get better because that's what AI does. In one class, I don't remember if it was the guy speaking, that was from Syria, I went to a seminar on it. Just to get how much smarter it gets, they took the version 3.0 and had it watch all these videos of people on the internet playing the game Go. It's an Asian like checkers only. I guess it has more advanced thought processes than some chess. Than chess. It watched all those videos and it played the world champion. 
five times, it won three out of five, and that world champion rarely loses, but it won three out of five times. The new version of the, this software, version four, came out in the last couple of weeks. The version three was out last November, so November to April. Every three or four months. Every three or four months. So they took the new version, and they just taught it the rules of Go, and they had it play another computer that they just taught the rules, don't watch humans. They played each other rapidly, and in computer time, they played a trillion times. They didn't have the new version play the guy. They had the new version play the old version. They played a thousand times or a hundred times, and the new version that just taught itself to play against itself won every time. So it would crush the human. But it doesn't. It doesn't have a quality issue. For example, I bought a new TV. My from people have been coming over and said your TV is too old, so they forced us to go across. You had to turn the channel to a box. So. Yeah, so anyway, well, the one I carried out of there was like 400 pounds. Yeah, that's I an mean, old TV. I took it down to, to yeah. Snohomish there, and the guy was like, oh my God. Yeah, Where's this guy coming from? from? And the one I put in there, I put in there like... Black and white TVs have been gone for a long time. Yeah, well, this was more than black. But, but anyway, um, I, we watched, uh, I watched a bunch of uh, airline stuff, crashes and issues, you know, to review stuff that happened in the old days. And now I want to watch um, a comedy. So I go to and I speak it, you know, this is, you know, I speak it the thing. I say, oh, well, this is comedy. It just gives me airline crash because that's what I was watching before. That's really and, dumb. Yeah, it is, I suppose. But it does, it does try to give you what it thinks you've been wanting. But when I change the want, the AI, AI doesn't know that. The it can't chap, apply. The new version 4? When, I'll, I'll send you some examples. I asked it questions that it had to really ponder and write it in a PhD level. Oh, yeah, yeah. And in areas that I'm near expert in, it's amazing what it will do. But it's a new tool. And I remember when people said, no, you're never going to have a computer in your house. That's ridiculous. And now we have them in our pocket. So we and can look either. At what our society looks well, like. Well, I don't disagree. We're all committing suicide. Well, not all of us, but <laughs> too many are. There's some problems, no doubt. There's a problem. There are social problems. That I don't think it's a computer. I think it's some software that's on computers that causes it. Just learning to do math. No, we just still interact. With it's the social media that causes. I don't think we have anything more for this no. evening. Oh, good. I also don't have to I ask. Know. I can adjourn a meeting. Oh, you can't. Meeting adjourned. What? Where, I, where are you getting this stuff? <laughs> Robert's <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> online, you mean? Robert's Rules of Order and our. Our, our policy what's, um, says we use Robert's Rules of Order. So I met with, there's there's 35 masters of parliamentary procedure, and I met with him and went through See, Dan, thank you. all of everything we're doing. And he was telling me, it's like, you haven't done anything wrong, but you're, because having two motions, that doesn't hurt anything, but you only need more. And so I'm going to interject and get us more in line. I'm doing it the way I saw it done for the first well, yeah. and I how I... I didn't realize it was wrong, but now I know it's wrong, and I'm going to try to make it right. Well, not necessarily wrong. Robert's rules was just to keep order. Eight hundred pages of rules. Yeah. And keep you going. It keeps it keeps the process moving, and no one gets are we offended. Still filming? Like, are we? Is YouTube on? She's getting it.